Hello fellow firecrafters and welcome to my backyard. Today I wanted to demonstrate my percussion fire making set. Percussion fire making involves three major elements. A piece of flint, and here I have a nice piece of dark English flint. It involves a form of iron pyrite known as marcasite. And it involves horse's hoof tender fungus, Foams fomentarius. So, the percussion method of fire making is believed to have originated in what, what we now know of as Europe in a uh, time tens of thousands of years ago and it's believed to actually predate the demise of the Neanderthals about 50,000 years ago. Uh, there's some evidence, some archaeological evidence, I, I believe, that uh, the Neanderthals may have actually known how to make fire by percussion, although it's not really known whether or not they discovered it on their own or whether or not they may have been taught the method by uh, modern humans that coexisted with them for a time. Um, interestingly enough, uh, in 1991, Otzi the Iceman's mummy was found high up in the Otzel Alps between Austria and Italy. Uh, he was found by some mountaineers. And uh, when, when he was examined, when his body was examined uh, after, after it was brought off the mountain, they discovered that he had a fairly sophisticated uh, fire making set in a uh, buckskin pouch tied underneath his clothing. And in that buckskin pouch was marcasite, flint, tender fungus, and I think some dried moss. Fairly sophisticated at the time. Otzi was killed, they believe, on the mountain uh, about 3400 BC. So that would be 5400 years ago. Um, the main elements, some more details on that. Flint is just something really hard. Chert would work. Quartz would probably work. And the whole purpose of the flint is to strike the marcasite and knock off small flakes, small shards, small slivers. The mark, uh, excuse me, the, uh, the flint is, uh, I think it rates about a seven on the Mohs hardness scale. By contrast, the uh, marcasite, which is a form of iron pyrite, is actually softer and somewhat brittle. Marcasite, as I said, is a form of iron pyrite. Some of you may be more familiar with fool's gold, which is another common form of iron pyrite. The uh, chemical formula for iron pyrite is FES2, iron disulfide. And one of the properties of iron pyrite, iron disulfide, is that it is pyrophoric. And what that means is that it spontaneously ignites in, in the presence of atmospheric oxygen at atmospheric temperatures, room temperatures. Uh, what that means to you and me is it makes a spark. So when I take my hard uh, piece of flint and strike the marcasite, it'll knock off a little sliver, a little shard, and the inner surface of that sliver, which is unoxidized, uh, reacts in the presence of oxygen exothermically. It's an oxidation reaction and it creates a spark. Actually, I think there are two sparks. I think there's a spark that's created on the, uh, the face of the marcasite where the shard is, uh, is knocked off. The sparks are really tiny though. Uh, they're very weak. They're uh, very small. They're not real hot. They're much weaker than you might expect through um, flint and steel and they're really tiny compared to what you would experience if you struck a ferro rod. The other, uh, the other element in percussion fire making is the tender fungus, horse's hoof tender fungus, foams fomentarius. And oh, by the way, I've got a nice big multi-lobed piece of horse's hoof fungus here that I think is pretty cool.
Then the outer layer here is what's known as the cuticle. It's as hard as it's as hard as wood once it dries, anyhow. When you slice into the uh, horse's hoof tender fungus, you get something that looks kind of like this. It's got three major inner structures to it, and I have uh, outlined the boundary of well, two inner structures. The, the third structure is the outer cuticle layer. Inside the uh, 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 tender fungus is two other primary uh, layers, and I've outlined them with a sharpie here. So on the outside is the cuticle. The uh, piece below this black line is what's called the spore tubes, and I think that's part of the, the, the reproductive part of the uh, tender fungus. And above the black line is the amadou layer. The amadou layer, to me, feels like, uh, like stiff felt. And the way it works is you take the tip of your, nice, of your knife and you scrape up some of the amadou layer and make a fine fuzz layer. Uh, that fuzz from the amadou uh, can then catch a spark when the marcosite is struck by the flint. It's a real nice fine fuzz. It'll eventually catch a spark even though the sparks are very weak. Once it catches, uh, it'll continue to smolder. It's a very hot uh, it'll burn very hot. It won't, it won't go to flame by itself, but it'll smolder very, very hot. And a piece this size might smolder for 20 minutes or more. And even though the spore tubes won't directly take a spark, once the amadou layer is ignited, it'll burn, the, the spore tube area will burn just as hot as, as anything else. Uh, and it won't go out. Uh, you can transfer that to your tender bundle just like you ordinarily would. You don't have to get in a hurry. Blow it to flame just like you would any other, uh, any other source of ignition. So that's the three main elements of uh, percussion fire making. Let's go give it a try and see if we can get in touch with our inner Neanderthal. Here we go. Once it ignites, it'll smolder for a long time until this piece of mushroom is consumed. A piece this big will go 15, 20 minutes could be. And it'll smolder hot. See it in there? See if we can get it to flame. Just got a tender bundle here from uh, some cedar bark I gathered on a walk in the woods a few days ago. You don't have to get in too big of a hurry. This will last a long time. There we go. There we go.
little cedar bark bird's nest. Uh, come on. I guess that counts as getting your tender bundle to flame, huh? Well, there you have it. Primitive percussion using flint, marcasite, and some horse's hoof tender fungus, the amadou portion. Maybe you'll give it a try sometime and get your caveman on. Have a good evening.